Looking for a fresh way to differentiate your practice? Today we're diving into an exciting and often overlooked opportunity, migraine management. Joining us is Dr. Ali Markowski, an expert in using innovative technology like Avulux lenses to treat patients suffering from migraines and light sensitivity. In this episode, you'll learn how incorporating a migraine subspecialty can not only enhance patient care, but also boost your practice's revenue. If you're looking for a fresh way to differentiate your practice and provide life-changing solutions to your patients and improve your bottom line, this episode is for you. Stay tuned. You won't want to miss it. Hi, welcome to another episode of I Own a Business, where we focus on helping practice owners grow the practice of their dreams. I'm your host, Dr. Steve Vargo, and joining us today is Dr. Ali Markowski, who is not only an accomplished optometrist, but also an expert on migraine headaches, who utilizes innovative technology to alleviate patient symptoms of migraine and light sensitivity. And so today the focus is on migraines and how to make this a a rewarding and lucrative subspecialty in your practice. So welcome, Allie. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Great that you're here. And if you don't mind just sharing a little bit about yourself, and I'm curious of your interest in in this subspecialty that we get into, that we'll get into of, of migraine headaches. What is your, your background? What got you interested in that specific topic? Yeah. So, um, I opened my private practice as a cold start in January of 2020. Um, and I opened it in my hometown, small hometown, and I wanted to just make sure that I was able to differentiate myself and have a very highly medical based practice. Um, and so over the past five years, I've kind of been building that up, bringing in newer technologies. Um, and one area of interest to me was definitely my migraine population, which is actually a whole lot larger than you ever kind of realize once you start asking about it. Um, and I began became an optometrist to not only have people see as well as possible, but feel as well as possible. Um, I'm a migraine sufferer myself. And so owning a practice, I said, I cannot stop working. And <laughs> I was previously powering through it or trying all of these other different technologies just to kind of see if there was anything that could help. Um, and when I discovered Avulux and that it was a lens that could help reduce mm -hmm migraines of light sensitivity. I was like, this is in my wheelhouse. Like, let's give this a try. And it's been incredibly successful. Thank you for the background. And that's something I want to get into as well is the difference between what you called what it is a, a lens versus other options. But um, first I want to, uh, you know, something we talk a lot about on this podcast is differentiation. And there's numerous ways to do that as, as we know, but an area that we haven't really focused on yet in this podcast, at least, is this area of of migraine headaches. And people hearing this, myself including, included migraine subspecialty. It, it almost sounds like a new concept. It's one you've gravitated toward. But, but to your point, given the prevalence of migraines, why haven't more ECPs heard of this before? Well, so I think that there's a few things, right? It's tough to ask a question and then not necessarily have a solution. And so previously to having the Avulex technology, it was one of those things where we weren't really able to address migraines as much as we can now. But because there's this solution, once we start asking the questions, do you suffer from migraines? Do you have light sensitivity? When we're taking their intake list and looking at the medications that we're on and we're seeing that trend of, oh, you do suffer from migraines and how debilitating is that? And is it reducing you from having that active lifestyle? Um, and how about we make that better by just having you wear this lens to reduce that light sensitivity? So it's nice where it's an option that also doesn't completely change somebody's lifestyle or habits. Um, and they're coming to us because they expect to get glasses and contacts and hopefully realize that we're great at treating glaucoma and macular degeneration. Um, but now we can also be their migraine specialists as well. It, it seems like a tremendous way to build trust and loyalty as well, because if somebody is coming to you, not for migraines, but you can resolve that issue for them, I'm pretty sure you got a patient for life. 
And it's a much more holistic approach, you know, when you're going a little bit deeper and not just asking if they're getting blurry vision or floaters, but you are asking them about their migraines. And then you're going even further and saying, okay, you know, a lot of people who suffer from this neurological disorder tend to get headaches, nausea, and about 90% of people are getting light sensitivity. You know, are you noticing that? And a lot of times people are like, oh, I didn't even realize, but yeah, that does happen a lot. Or it does seem to be one of those things where when I am getting a migraine, one of the first symptoms is light sensitivity. And for me personally, when that happens, I have about 20 minutes to run and hide under the covers before that migraine sets in. Um, and now it's great where I'm like, okay, I can feel something coming on. Let me just grab these lenses, put them on. And if it means that I can still stay and see patients for the rest of the day, um, then it's a win-win situation. <laughs> So a lot of this comes from your own experience then with migraines, which is really interesting because I, I, I'm i guessing a lot of the passion toward trying to want want to help other people comes from your own experience. It's very relatable to be able to, and it's something I talk about with specialty in general, because people have asked before, like, what specialty should I go into? And my answer is, I don't know. Like, what do you want to go into? What's really interesting to you? If you hate kids, maybe don't go into vision <laughs> therapy. So let's just start there. But I, I always try to when I look at people like you who are successful in a specific subspecialty or a specific area, whatever we want to call it, they seem to be passionate about that specific area, whether it's my myopia management, low vision. So I'm sure there's a lot of doctors out there listening who have migraines as well. And that might be something that they want to better understand too. Can you also, for those who are listening who are non-physicians or just a refresher for those who are, when I was having a prep call with a few people, Derek's in the room with you uh, <laughs> there before to talk about what we were going to talk about with you, uh, I was talking with Derek and Bill and I got my hand slapped because I, I, uh, I said <laughs> headache instead of migraine. And they're like, no, Abulux is specifically for migraine. So can you give us a refresher on the difference? Yeah. So um, a migraine is a neurological disorder, whereas a headache is going to be a symptom similar to nausea or light sensitivity. Um, and so it's one of those things where when we're actually able to help to reduce some of the chronic effects from a migraine or that neurological disorder, it becomes a much more medical diagnosis um, than just treating the symptoms of headaches eye strain, light sensitivity. Can we go back to communication for a second? Because you talked before about the questions that you ask. And I'm, I'm a big believer in asking more questions because once you truly diagnose the pain somebody's having, I think the solution becomes much easier. I think doctors spend, that we do it in reverse, I believe, is we ask a few questions and then we spend the rest of the time trying to convince people to do things they might not be ready or willing to do, where I think an, the approach that works better is just the opposite. Ask more questions, get people to start revealing and eliciting the problem from their perspective. And I think it's easier to come in with the solution, but can we, can you elaborate on the communication standpoint? I, I think there's something that doctors really underestimate is the challenge of getting people to, to do or buy something that they're unfamiliar with or that they don't understand. And this is something that's very prevalent in, in any specialty. I, I think that we think we can come in, sit down with our lab coat on and a bunch of fancy degrees behind us and just educate people. But it's typically more than that to, to build connection, to build trust, um, to overcome skepticism. And yes, people can be skeptical of their doctor if they're hearing something for the first time. So can you take us through the communication Maybe it's just you and maybe it's others in the staff on how you, um, how do you establish the value for this? What, what does that interaction look and sound like? Yeah. So I do think that one of the best things to do is kind of figure out what their chief complaint is. And a lot of times we think that, okay, it's the first thing that they mention. But once we can start doing a lot of the case history um, in pre-testing and asking them a few more specific questions, then sometimes we can kind of get down into what their true complaints are. Um, you know, and a lot of times they'll have vague complaints of like, blurry vision or eye strain. But once we kind of realize, okay, well, when does this happen? What is the frequency? Are you getting light sensitivity with that? Um, and people are like, oh yeah, I am. 
don't most people? And we're like, well, if we can actually do something to reduce that, and we'll do a little teaser in pre-testing and saying, if you have light sensitivity, I'm going to have the doctor talk to you about um, this, spe this specific technology that we have. And then when they come into the exam room and I get to elaborate a little bit more and ask them a little bit more about their migraines. And one of the most powerful things is I appreciate all the patients, but they always feel like they are unique and specific. And when you're like, do you get light sensitivity with the migraines? And they're like, yes, I do. We know that 90% of people who suffer from migraines get light sensitivity, but when you can actually tell them what they have before they have to express it to you, you give them a lot more confidence and trust saying, oh, she knows exactly what I'm talking about and the type of suffering that I'm going through. And then when we're able to go even further and say, okay, I have a solution to help reduce a lot of that light sensitivity and alleviate a lot of those migraines, um, you know, in, and it's in a lens, people are like, wait, I don't have to take a pill. It's not going to change my lifestyle. I can wear it as much or as little as I want. Um, it's a really good thing. And the other thing is that having the staff understand the technology, um, most people that suffer from migraines or our target audience tends to be women between 30 and 40, which happens to be my entire staff, um, you know, and having them try the Avulux and just seeing how much it does reduce a lot of that visual noise really helps to drive, I don't know, the idea across. <laughs> There's a lot to unpack there. And yeah, you made a great point that a lot of times the chief complaint isn't necessarily the first thing they mentioned. Mm -hmm. And especially with migraine, people probably come in and one thing, isn't this normal? Because I used to hear that a lot. Isn't this normal? Or they don't necessarily know that their eye doctor can fix the problem. You know, they, so the ability to ask those questions and, and peel back the layers. And also you mentioned like the staff mentioning things to a lot of times somebody's willingness to invest in something is more of a journey. It's not one person coming in and saying, Hey, you should do this because that usually raises our skeptic. You know, we get, we get skeptical. We like, well, how much is it? And do I really need this? And why didn't my last doctor mention it? But when we start piquing their curiosity, maybe from the first phone call and show that level of understanding, I, I think to your point, it, it builds a lot of trust through the, um, uh, through the process. Can you take us through the, operational side, if for somebody who might be interested in integrating or implementing a migraine subspecialty, what does that look like? Can you discuss the operations, like the marketing, staff training, scheduling, things like that? Yeah. So the Avulex team is phenomenal and literally everything comes in this cute little box, <laughs> um, which is fantastic. So um, it's great because it's a quick training and it's just one of those things where the Avulex team is able to educate the staff and the doctors. Um, they have demo lenses, which is one of the best parts of the entire box. Um, and then it does come with marketing material and a few questions that you can ask during pre-testing. Um, at first we were using exactly what they were asking during pre-testing. Testing, and we've kind of changed it around a little bit just for my own personal flow. Um, and then after educating the team um, and realizing that, oh, it's not going to take an extra five minutes in pre-testing to do something, or I don't have to, you know, educate on this new crazy technology that nobody understands. You're like, okay, you're getting migraines, you're getting light sensitivity. There's lenses that can help that. Um, it makes it nice and streamlined for the staff. Um, I don't spend any extra time in the exam room besides for talking to them about their chief complaints, which I would do anyways, and prescribing treatment options. Um, and then the only thing that's really changed, which is pretty cool, is now when I do bring them into optical and I explain to my optician that this patient suffers from migraines and light sensitivity and we would would be an excellent candidate for the Avulex. Um, my optician grabs the demo lenses um, and says, you know what? I'm just going to have you put these on. We'll talk about the Avulex in a second. Let me just kind of see what you're looking for in terms of frame style lens options. And they look a little skeptical. They put the glasses on. They're like, what am I doing here? And then um, the optician kind of goes into all of the other options. And then in about five minutes, she goes, by the way, how are you feeling? And they're like, 
I feel really good. And so the lenses sell themselves. We don't have to talk about how great they are. We put them on and the patient experiences it. I love everything about that. Everything you Me just too. said. Um, <laughs> it keep it, it. I mean, it falls in line with so many things that I think make this uh an attractive opportunity. One is just, it, it, it's simple. It's keeping it simple. What is the pushback or some doctors not spending more time on any kind of specialty care? A lot of times, I mean, there's a few things that, that come to mind. Some of it is a, a certain level of jadedness because they've talked and they've educated and informed people, but then they don't do it. So you cut right through that with this lens when they can just put it on and see for themselves. Um, but also it doesn't take a lot of time. Some doctors will say, I just don't, I'm a, if we're a busy practice. I just don't have the time to do this. So I, I love the, um, efficiency aspect of it. And you really answered a question that I was going to ask about a word that you use with skepticism. And I think the ability to put those on and see for yourself helps overcome that skepticism because we have to figure a lot of these patients, they've been to their PCP, they've been to maybe their neurologist and, most likely these doctors prescribe pills. Well, pills, we understand pills are easy and we tend to gravitate as consumers toward things that we understand. So I think there's something to be said for the ease of this and not spending too much time. Well-intended doctors sometimes talk the patient out of a purchase because they spend too much time, use too much clinical terminology and just confuse people. And when you confuse someone, you've lost them. You've lost them. Completely. Yeah. It's one of those things where if you can just educate them, say, I have a solution, they try it on. Um, and, and one of the best things is obviously anything like you have to build up confidence, not only for the doctor, but for the team. Um, the amount of patients that we've had that have since referred other patients, because us migraine sufferers, like we stick together, you know, if like there's something that's out there that works, like we're going to spread the word. <laughs> um, and so the amount of referrals that we've gotten for this lens specifically, because we've prescribed to other patients and they're talking about how much their symptoms have been reduced is very empowering. Can you talk about, I mean, you don't have to get into specific, you know, dollar figures, but people are wondering probably, is it, is it profitable? Is it something that's been a lucrative aspect of your practice? Yeah. So um, I think for all of us independent ODs, the more cash pay options that are out there, um, again, I like to keep things simple. Insurance is messy to me or vision plans are messy. Um, and so anything that doesn't involve that is fantastic. Um, and then, yeah, the pay structure or the MSRP, nice and easy to follow. Um, and then I like that there is actually options where we can prescribe it as a prescription lens that they can wear full time. Um, or what I do myself is I wear another specialty lens and then I have the Avulux as a clip on. And so I'm not wearing it constantly because I'm not always having a migraine, but when I feel it coming on, I do pop on the clip on, um, which is a nice option. I was going to save this for the end, but you've got me curious now, the clip-on part. Can you just explain what they are? For people who aren't familiar with the Avulux lens, maybe go into a little bit of the, the technology. I didn't realize there was a clip-on. Tell us a little bit about the, the product itself. Yeah. So the Avulux lens, it is a tinted lens. And so basically what the technology has found is that any red, amber, and blue wavelengths tend to be more triggering for migraines and cause more light sensitivity, whereas the blue wavelengths actually seem to calm a lot of those symptoms. And uh, sorry, green. Thanks, Derek. Green. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Derek's here. Okay, you coach, got we got job. Get the color right, and he came through <laughs> like, like a champ. Let's go through the whole <laughs> rainbow here. <laughs> Derek just had a no, he just got had an anxiety attack. <laughs> so the bad wavelengths, red, amber, blue, good wavelength, green. <laughs> um, and so what this lens does is it helps to filter out that red, blue, and amber and still allows the green in, which does reduce the symptoms of light sensitivity. Got it. Got it. And that could be built into the lens or it could be a, a clip on, as, as you said. And that's the nice thing. And so it's one of those things where for some people, and it's actually funny, 
I've been surprised at how many people like the lens so much that they're actually wearing it full time because it does have a little bit of a coloring to it. Um, but a lot of patients are wearing the lenses full time, especially those that suffer from migraines on a daily or weekly basis. Um, but then there is also the option where they could either get a second pair that's when they're, when they decide that they want to use it. Or my personal favorite is you've got your prescription glasses and then just a chemistry clip clip on. And that has not the prescription in it, but just that, that Abulux lens. And so you can wear it as much or as little as you want. Do you market these externally or is this mostly word of mouth that you've grown this subspecialty as we're calling it? It's on my wish list to market it externally, you know, with a, a few other things on my to-do list as well. Um, but it's been amazing. I don't want any of my patients to suffer from migraines, but it's been amazing how many people do. And so it is one of those things where you're able to find the patients in the office that have been suffering from them. Um, and so, so far, it's just been all internal. And then how do you identify? I mean, is there something beyond just the chief complaint or someone mentioning they get migraine headaches and then your clinical skills kicking into gear and, and you know, just diagnosing a migraine? Is there anything else you use as far as a diagnostic, whether that's a, a lifestyle questionnaire or some other fancy tool in the office? Yeah. So originally we were doing a lifestyle questionnaire, but I think every technology out there has one. And so for me, the less lists that people have to figure out and the more conversations that we can have, I just feel like that makes things a little bit more organic and we can kind of just tap into a few more of those symptoms, kind of draw out a few more of mm -hmm. those concerns that they're having. Um, and so for me, it's just been a talking point. So basically the only thing that I've needed to add into pre-testing is making sure that we are asking patients directly, do you suffer from migraine? Do you get light sensitivity? Where I think as previously um, before we're like, oh, do you have, you know, any light sensitivity, headaches, eye strain, floaters, flashes, and we kind mm -hmm. of lumped them all together. Mm -hmm. Now we make sure that we're asking that one specific question so that if the answer is yes, we can kind of double click into it. Yeah. And I've heard a little pushback and I, I don't know if I've ever seen data on this, but some doctors are a little hesitant to use questionnaires because they feel like it's the, the patient is going to feel like they're going to be sold something based on the, the lifestyle questionnaire. So I, as it was explained to me once by somebody in sales, they said something that I, I always remember. They said, people don't buy things because someone else told them to. People buy things because they convince themselves it's a good idea. So I'm going to go back to your strategy of having people just put the lenses on and see for themselves. I think they they go through a mental shift at that point where they don't have to be told what to do. They start exploring their own reasons for want, wanting something. And you start saying, what is this? Money becomes much less of a significant object when it when we really recognize the true pain, pain that it's solving. You know, it's, it's harder to sell vitamins to avoid to somebody to avoid a health problem twenty years from now than it is to sell aspirin to somebody having a headache. They literally have the headache, and we're right. holding the medication right there. And and that's the whole thing when you're just able to have them put them on and experience it for themselves. Um, I hate to oversell and under deliver. <laughs> that is, and so it's one of those things where I never want to push anybody. I just want to give them the tools, the opportunity, you know, a little bit of that education and have them experience it for themselves. Can you explain a little bit more, maybe share a story about your experience with some of the patients or a patient? What, what is the kind of feedback you get beyond what you've talked about? Um, it would seem the sort of thing that but somebody especially who's experienced migraine headaches for years would have, you know, quite a um, uh, almost an emotional reaction to to feeling the sense of relief, especially if if they haven't found success in other treatments along the way. Well, it's great that it's, again, it's a lens. So you are not changing anything about your lifestyle. You are wearing a pair of glasses that you are normally wearing anyways, but the lifestyle changes that my patients have noticed has been incredible before when I have a specific patient that I'm thinking of. One of the first that I did prescribe for the Abulux, she was a migraine sufferer and she was only able to work part-time because she just couldn't put in 40 hours because of 
the pain that she was having. And so we said, let's have you try this lens just to see if it can give you any relief at all. Um, she now is working full time. She wears the lenses full time, but she's like, I can be at a computer. Oh no, I can go into the office with those overhead fluorescent lights and I have the lens on and it's, you know, I may still be having that headache, that migraine, but it's something that I can tolerate instead of it being so debilitating. Um, and so it's giving people hours and days back, mm -hmm. which is pretty incredible. Yeah. And I think it, it, it's really powerful. I think when the doctor can share these stories, one, I, I did a podcast before with somebody who had their own story to share, but yet kept that inside and was afraid to be vulnerable and tell other people about it. But once he did, he found that other people opened up about things that they were going through. So again, just you or other doctors listening who have migraine headaches, I think that relatability really creates a, a strong mechanism of, of trust and connection between you and the patient. But also, do you have uh, any staff that have migraines? Because I would think that would be powerful out there. Once you send them out into the optical, that would be powerful out there as well. Yeah. So my um, optician has always had migraines um, and she has been fantastic and a fighter through them. Um, but it was one of those things where previously when I would go into, we have the optical and then the lab and the lab lights would be off and I would be like, oh no, today's not going to be a good day. Um, and now, and she was great. She'd be able to power through it. Like you knew she was suffering. You're like, thank you for being here. Um, but you don't want somebody to suffer. And then now the lights are never off. She's got her lenses on, but the lights are never off. Um, and so that's, it's just definitely been a change that's been there, which is cool. So these are powerful stories to share as well. And with, even with other patients, I mean, you've got your own story, obviously, because you have headaches, but Sometimes doctors, again, we get caught up a little bit in the, you know, the clinical side of things, which you could just lose people in that. But the ability to, I learned this from public speaking, is to take information and wrap it into a story really draws people in. And it's much more memorable because people are going to forget most of the things you tell them within like 24 hours. They'll forget 90% of the things, information, facts, data, all that stuff. But people really do relate to stories and they retain the information. So sorry to go off on a tangent there, but just listening to a story like that, if I were the patient, I was unfamiliar with these lenses, it would be something that would really stick with me and really motivate me to at least want to know more and, and potentially lead all the way up to a, up to a sale. Is there much, there's not much staff training then? Cause that's the other pushback sometimes with specialty is, oh my gosh, I get so hard to get my staff to do anything different. Uh, now I'm bringing in new technology, but it doesn't sound like there's a whole lot to this. And that's, and, you know, so I'm still like this excited OD, you know, I've only had my practice for five years. I keep bringing in new and new technology. I get excited about it. And my staff is like, not another thing. You're like, oh God, how are we going to fit this in or that? in? um, you know, and so when I told them about this lens, they're like, uh, what, what does this involve? And I was like, guys, it's going to be great. And they were like, oh, we had a lunch and learn. They put on the lenses. We've got the pamphlets. They're like, oh, this is fantastic. We don't have to change anything that we're doing. We just, what we're doing is we're doing things with a little bit more purpose. That's the only thing we're changing. Well, if, um, if you could open a practice in January of 2020, you could probably make anything work. <laughs> and that probably only added to the migraine issue. In <laughs> you have no idea. Propel. I was like, where's the book for dummies on pandemics? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was not in the business plan. No. Um, well, I, this has been great. And I, again, where we started was talking about, um, you know, the area of specialty and doctors wanting to differentiate themselves and looking at different areas. I think this appears to be a very neglected area that would potentially bring um, a, a fair amount of lucrative value to the practice, but also a great deal of value to the patients and a great deal of value to the doctor in terms of their excitement about getting out of bed in the morning and going into um, to work. I think sometimes the job of optometry can become a bit routine and stale. So I think we have to work sometimes to keep it interesting and exciting. And this sounds like something that could really um, allow you to do that if you brought it into your practice. It's been very fulfilling. Well, Ali, so much. Uh, thank you so much. It, it's been great. Um, 
I hope I, I know a lot of people got a lot out of this and um, I, I hope this is something that they'll strongly consider in their practice. How would someone find out more about Abulux? Where would they go to learn more? That's a great question. ecp.abulux.com. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, thanks again. And we'll close out here. I want to thank um, Allie for her time and I want to thank everyone for listening. If you enjoyed today's episode, please subscribe to our podcast wherever you're listening. You can leave a review, share it with your friends and colleagues, and you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And to learn more about iDoc, you can visit our website at iDoc.net and check out the links in our show notes for some helpful resources for your practice. And we'll also put the link for Avilux in there and anything else Derek wants me to put in there, it'll be in the show notes. So, <laughs> so thanks again, Allie. Really appreciate your time. And to everyone listening, we'll see you next time.